Jill Bilcock is an Australian editor who began her career editing at her kitchen table. She was a part of the first university film course in Australia at Swinburne University of Technology and tried different aspects of filmmaking before finding her love for editing. Professionally, she has edited films such as Muriel's Wedding, Road to Perdition and Moulin Rouge, which will be the main case study within this video essay. When making Moulin Rouge, Bill Cook said, I feel like it, that there will be yet a reinvention of style somehow that comes out of this. And that's when I do all those little clips and things, sometimes I stumble across something that I find can unlock a door to push it into another area stylistically. Throughout the film, Bill Cook's editing allows for the narrative to continue whilst also having a hyperkinetic style which the film is so famous for. However, this style was not always typical for Hollywood. Edwin Porter, who was one of the first great editors, discovered that by cutting film and placing certain pieces next to each other, you could create a narrative. He made the films Life of an American Fireman and The Great Train Robbery. It was later that D.W. Griffith pioneered the idea of an invisible cut, shifting from close-ups to master shots without the audience noticing, so as not to break the illusion that you were watching a film. However, Bill Cook's edits are noticeable, breaking this illusion. For example, when we are first introduced to Satine, she enters the Moulin Rouge singing the lyric The French are glad to die for love. As soon as the word die is sung, Bill Cook cuts to a scene from the finale of the film when Satine dies. Although it is not a shock to us that Satine will die, as it is told to us at the beginning of the film, it hits us harder when we are shown two juxtaposing clips of Satine being happy and then her succumbing to her fate. The graphic match itself is quick, it is down to the audience to look out for it, but once you notice it, the scene becomes more heartbreaking due to the carefree Satine we see in one moment to a dead Satine in the next. By putting this graphic match paired with the lyric, Bill Cook is playing around with narrative and reminding the audience that this is in fact not real. What Bill Cook does in Moulin Rouge directly contradicts traditional Hollywood editing, with the hyperkinetic style making you acknowledge the idea that this is a film and thus can be as flamboyant and fantastical as it pleases. An example of this is when we are first introduced to the location of the Moulin Rouge. Within the first 30 seconds of this scene, there are around 40 different cuts. The use of quick cut edits showing us multiple different things happening with the Moulin Rouge, from the can-can dancers to the men enjoying the show and Harold entertaining the audience, allows for the chaos of the Moulin Rouge to be conveyed to the audience, especially since we are lining with Christian and he is experiencing this for the first time, just like we are. This use of editing truly lets us be immersed in this new world and allows for the Moulin Rouge's own character to be established, not to mention this whole sequence is a musical number, so rhythmic editing is crucial to allow the flow of the scene to not be broken and the timing of the shots to fit with the song. This is something Bill Cook says is very important to her as an editor. Editing is about having hundreds of options. You have to decide, first of all, what emotionally touches you. You also edit for structure, and then you, most of all, edit for rhythm. The way Bill Cook edited Moulin Rouge differs to the way most films are typically edited. In his book, In the Blink of an Eye, Walter Murch, editor of Apocalypse Now, describes editing using the metaphor of a beehive being moved. Merch says a beehive can apparently be moved two inches each night without disorientating the bees the next morning. Surprisingly, if it is moved two miles, the bees also have no problem. They are forced by the total displacement of their environment to reorientate their sense of direction, which they can do easily enough. But if the hive is moved two yards, the bees will become fatally confused. The environment does not seem different to them, so they do not reorientate themselves. By this, much means that by putting two images together that differ, an audience can notice that they are somewhere different and process what is happening. However, if you put clips together that can be too similar, it will confuse the audience as we are seeing too much of the same in the single scene. What Bill Cook does with Moulin Rouge goes against what Merch says, allowing for the erratic state of the Moulin Rouge to be displayed to the audience, thus altering the traditional grammar of editing. Moulin Rouge earned Academy Award and BAFTA nominations for Bill Cox editing, the only one of Baz Luhrmann's Red Curtain trilogy to be nominated for an editing Oscar, all of which were edited by Bill Cox. Not to mention its Best Picture nomination. The way she edits allows for the audience to be fully immersed in the film and the fantasy side of the world, with edits that shape the narrative with a uniqueness only she can achieve.